Tis the fucking season, isn't it? It's the Christmas time, the big holiday season where everybody spends a lot of money and buys a lot of shit. Let's look at this stuff. See all this stuff? I got a lot of this stuff for holidays. A lot of this was Christmas gifts or birthday gifts. You know, I'm trying to think exactly. I mean, I don't remember exactly which ones were. It's been a long time since I got any of these. These are all old. That's why it's all early 2000s anime or late 2000s anime. <laughs> but it was, it was, a lot of it was Christmas gifts. And it's got me thinking, you know, lately, I've gotten, I've gotten a little bit cynical about the act of buying anime. And uh, I was inspired to make this video after my friend and fellow anime YouTuber, Nino, sent me a rap verse he wrote about this exact same cynicism. And, uh, and I, I wanted to talk about it in a video, specifically because I, in some ways, uh, in the early part of me growing as an anime YouTuber, was like a spokesman for spending money on anime. You know, I made this video, Why Good Anime is Hard to Make. It's the second, just now got passed to become the second biggest video in my channel's history. It just got passed by the How to Recognize a Terrible Anime in Just One Episode video. Um, but for a long time it's been my most popular video and I followed it up with this uh, buyer's guide to anime shit where I just like showed all the different kinds of anime stuff you can buy and how to buy it. And like I was really sort of pushing this angle that like if you want to support anime you need to pay for it. And that like the reason that you know, we don't get more ambitious shows is because they don't sell as well. But on some level, yes, we need to give back to the anime industry, you know, to keep it afloat. But at the same time, the sort of romantic idea of like, you pay for a show and that pays the artists who made the show, that I've become a lot more cynical towards. And I don't I, I don't really see it, like, I don't think when a show like, you know, like Osamatsu-san or something, for a recent example, like, when that show gets incredible Blu-ray sales, I don't think that translates at all to just paying the people who made the show. I don't think that those people make more money. You know, it might help their, it might help their careers, it might help them to, you know, in the long run, to, to be able to greenlight more similar shows, hopefully. That's kind of like, that's kind of like the logic we all have in our brains, that like it's how it should work. But like, the thing about an industry like anime is that there's just so many layers to the production and to whose money is going where and like, what you're actually doing with your money when you put it into the industry. And... I don't think, at, I don't know that throwing money at the problem actually helps, you know? Even when a big show comes out that's very uh, out there and experimental or different and it is successful, that doesn't mean we get another one the next year. You know, that's not been the case. Now, I made that video, you know, towards the back end of 2014. I'd just gotten back into anime in a big way. I had, you know, marathoned a bunch of really exciting shows, and I was excited about the idea of these exciting shows and stuff, and 2014 was a great year. And, uh, you know, in the time since then, I've seen a lot more about the industry and how it works and how people are getting paid and why people are working in the industry. And I've come to the, what I guess should be obvious conclusion, that no one is working on anime for money. No one's doing that because it's not sensible. You would not work in that industry if you wanted to make money. It is not a lucrative industry at any level other than being like a famous voice actress. If you've all probably seen that famous Shiro Bako uh, price chart thing, and Shiro Bako makes the case for this. At the end of the show, the whole message was like, you know, Aoi going around asking everyone, why do you work on anime? And they're all like, because I like anime you know, because I want to work in this industry, it is no one answers, it makes me money, or it's lucrative, you know, it's a, it's a stress-inducing, hard-as-nails job that doesn't pay well. Um, you only do it because you care about it. And, you know, we can support the industry sort of as a whole, we can put money into it and keep it afloat, and keep those people having a job. 
But I don't think that that ideal of, like, I spend money on a show I like, and therefore the exact people who worked on that show make money, I don't think that's real. You know, and that's kind of how I posed it before, and I've just become completely jaded to that idea that I don't even think it's real anymore. Because in what I've, what I've come to realize, again, is that those, those people aren't working in the industry because it pays well. You know, those people... The people who are languishing the fact that, like, whenever whenever a director comes out and says, like, the problem with the anime industry is that, you know, only cute girl stuff is popular and that's what's marketable and everyone's trying to make shows that are marketable to try to turn a buck and that's the problem killing the industry. It's like, what they really mean is that they, you know, they want to make their niche stuff and the niche stuff doesn't sell, but that's, it's kind of a fact of life. It's like, it's just what the market demands, you know? The only reason these people are making their weird anime is because they want to, you know? Like, my, the kind of the point of my video was like, if the market spoke out for great anime to exist, then we'd get more of it. But the fact is that it's, I'm really talking about my idea of what is great anime, or the people who are, who are complaining about, you know, they're not being enough great anime, and those people are probably spending the money anyways. The fact is we just don't make up a huge market share, you know? But it's not about money for them or for us. They're not making the shows to turn a profit, they're making it to make good art, and we are watching it because we want good art, and at no point really is money like a factor in that. You know, it has to make money, and I guess, I mean, the message I'm sending here is not don't support anime. It's just that, like, that idea, like, the imagination of a show selling so well that all of its animators get paid better is definitely not happening. You know, they're, they're making a flat wage, probably. Ever since I first saw that Shirobako financial, like, map, it's kind of been seared into my mind. Because, like, the, the guy, other than the voice actress, the guy at the very top was making, like, middle-class income. You know, no one's making a lot of money off of it. Um, and that, in some ways, is even cooler. Like, the idea that, it's yeah, it's not about money. It's about passion. It's about just wanting to work in this medium, wanting to work in the arts. And, you know, if people just want to do anime so badly that they're going to work on these shitty shows that, you know, at least they're doing what they want to do on some level, you know. I'm sure everyone would like to work on an artistic masterpiece, but I'm sure a lot of people in the industry are just in it because they want to fucking draw, you know. I was really inspired by this video from uh, Shallow Rewards, Chris Ott, who I've talked about a few times on here, where he talked about... Spotify. And this was this was one of the most radical shifts I've had in my perception of something ever. Cuz I had heard for years artists and stuff complaining about Spotify and how little money it pays out. The Spotify is a streaming service that you have to you basically have to have a mega hit song to make any money on Spotify because you have to get like the the equivalent, like, if you're on Bandcamp and someone pays $10 for your album, you could probably sell, like, a, like 150 albums and make, like, a livable wage each month, if you sold that much a month. And if you were playing on Spotify, you'd need, like, 11,000 plays, like, an unreasonable number of plays that only a mega hit is going to have. That might even be too small of a number. I, I don't remember the graph perfectly. And, you know, some of the bigger artists were complaining about it. Taylor Swift was refusing to put her songs on Spotify and stuff like that. And, and for a while I thought, well, obviously Spotify is the wrong way to go. You know, put your stuff on Bandcamp or put it, put it somewhere that's, that pay, people can pay you directly. But the thing is, as Chris points out in his video, that if you're a small artist, none of it fucking matters. Because you're not making any money anyways. You were never going to make money. If you're not a mainstream artist, and those people, it doesn't matter, because they're going to make money either way, so who the fuck, you know, they will make money through Spotify, because they'll get the hundreds of thousands of plays. But if you're not someone who can get that many plays on Spotify, you're also not going to make that much money through Bandcamp. You're not going to make that much money anywhere. You know, people don't make small-time bands for the money. 
because if you wanted to make money, you'd make pop hits. You know, if you can't make pop hits, get out of the music industry if you want to make money. You know, you're in it because you want to make music. You, you are passionate about that facet of it. And, you know, hearing that really made me completely 180 my stance on it. And I was like, oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Like, why wouldn't you put your shit on Spotify? Who cares what it pays? The fact that it pays at all is exciting, you know? I mean, you got to get your stuff out there where someone's going to fucking see it. It can't just languish on your band camp that no one's going to click on, you know? And so it made me kind of think about anime in the same terms. Like, no amount of us, like, rallying the troops to have the, the few thousand people, maybe the couple million people who care about most of these shows you know, telling them to buy the super, super special Blu-rays, that's not going to get, uh, you know, Joe Animator, Satoshi Animator, it's not going to get him a huge raise, you know, the, the, the guys making the show are not going to suddenly make way more money just because we spent more on Blu-rays, which are most, most of that money is going to publishers and, uh, you know, the people who funded the show. It's not going to the people who made the show. It's going to the people who put the money into the show. You know, it's going to Sony or Sony Music or it's going to fucking TV Tokyo or to Crunchyroll or to Funimation or whoever's bringing it stateside. You know, you're not, you're not really putting much money or probably any money, like, right into the hands of the people making the show. It's just not how that industry's built. You know, and I've said before, I'd love it if there was a Patreon for anime studios, if there was a donation box where I could just pay the fucking people who I care about, you know, if, if they had, like, a list of animators, they each, every animator had a Patreon for their continued existence, I'd be totally down. But, you know, that's not the reality of the situation. And buying these fucking box sets, especially at the discount prices that we all go for, you know, I mean, the comments on that video... The, 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 you know, uh, the, uh, why good anime is hard to make video. Like, you know, a huge number of the comments were people saying, like, either I can't afford anime, it's not really available to me, or, you know, it's too expensive. And it's like, yeah, that's the thing. We don't value it that highly to spend that much money on it. Like, the amount of money you'd have to spend for it to really make a huge impact on the industry, no, no one's gonna pay that. You know, like, we're not going to spend... I probably bought all of these at the cheapest I could pro possibly find them. You know, it's like... No one's really making that much profit off of what we're spending on anime. And that's not... Again, it's not to say, like, don't spend anything, because the thing... The whole industry is run on that. Just that, that whole ideal... That, that, like, that idea that, like, you just, you just buy the thing and the people you love are going to make money. You know, it's maybe somewhat ill-considered. And the fact of the matter is that the people who are making it are making it because they want to make it. They chose to be in this industry, you know. And sure, it would probably be easier for them if they get to make shows they like and if they get to, you know, be well off. But I don't know that just buying the special edition Blu-ray is going to give an animator an extra meal through the day, you know. I, I'd much rather <laughs> I'd love to just like go around to anime studios and like drop off lunch packages or something as opposed to buying the Blu-rays because I'm sure it's more helpful that way. I mean, I've said this uh, before, as someone with a Patreon, I understand all too well that like, let's compare like DVD sales to ad revenue that I make on YouTube. Like... I have commenters sometimes who are like, you know, I never use ad blocker when I watch your videos and I watch, you know, I leave them running all day. I'm like, that's cool. And, you know, I rack up uh, retention time. But, like, every ad you ever watch on my channel, none of that will ever compare to if you just sent me $1. Like, if you were to just PayPal me $1, it'll make more than all all of the ad revenue you will ever possibly make me. That's not true about Crunchyroll subscriptions. If you subscribe to Crunchyroll using my link, I make five bucks. That's a huge amount, and you don't even have to pay anything. Um, of course, there's a limited number of that. You can only do it once. But, like, 
you know, if we had some way to just, like, actually put a dollar in the hand of an animator, it would be a, it would be way better, probably, than buying all this bullshit. Which is mostly going to fund people I don't even care about. And that's really where the cynicism comes in for me, where it's like, you know, I'd love... Even if it's just a little bit, I'd love to be able to support the people I care about, but I kind of resent supporting all these other people. Like, I hate Funimation. I've always hated Funimation. I, their streaming service fucking blows, their image quality looks like garbage, they have, you know, weak-ass translations, I hate their dubs, all their dubs are garbage. Um, yes, all of them, every dub ever, <laughs> except for, uh, maybe, did they dub Dragon Ball Z or Yu Yu Hakusho? If they did, those are great. Um, same team, I believe, or a lot of the same people on both of them. That's in the 90s. You don't get credit for that anymore. Fuck Funimation. They fucking flagged some of my videos before. I hate them. I don't want to buy Funimation Blu-rays and, like, know that, like, I'm mostly just supporting Funimation. On some level, I might be supporting the guys back in Japan, but I'm mostly just giving money to Funimation, who I don't like, you know? Ah, <sighs> so... You know, spend money if you have it, if you like owning things, if you if you like Funimation, if you like these companies, if you like that they're giving you a nice hard copy release that you can have on a shelf, if you like your shelf candy. Because, I mean, that's why people used to buy these, because people just liked collecting. People liked owning a cool thing with their favorite show on it. But these days, like, the shit you buy, I can't even, my Blu-ray collection's downstairs. Uh, actually, better example, right over here, you know... I didn't even pay for this. This was sent to me by uh, Reverse Spectrum. And I love that I own it. I love that I own all of K-On! on Blu-ray. But this is how most anime looks now. It's just like a little, it's just like a little plastic case, you know, with a piece of paper with the show on it. It's like, it's, it's, it's weird. It's like I'm buying it for utility, even though everyone knows I could watch this show online. You know, if I'm going to pay money for it, why not make it something fucking crazy? Give, give me the, the full-blown... You know, the whole point of anti-piracy measures is that it's something you can't get online. Uh, a plastic case, you know, with a little paper slip with the show on it. Not exactly something I can't get online. So that's why I'm kind of, that's why I haven't been buying a lot of anime shit. You know, like, people probably noticed that even though I talked all that game back then, my collection doesn't expand that much, you know. Occasionally I buy some things, you know, especially if it's, if I can see a kind of, like, when I bought Shirobako at Otakon, when it was, like, PA Works were there, and I could, like, take it to them and be like, hey, I, I bought your show, make more of it, please, I love you, you know, that's, it's, like, a different, it's more like buying the experience. I just don't think that buying the DVD straight up is, like, this huge statement the way that I kind of thought it was back then. You know, I've been buying more manga because I like reading manga in person, but even that, all of it's fucking overpriced now, as I talked about in my uh, video on whether manga and light novels are getting overpriced. Ugh. So anyway, that's your holiday cynicism from Digibro. And if, <laughs> if it seems like a, like, weird, why is this the only holiday video you're making? My family is very cynical about Christmas. Um, we are a completely a religious family and my parents hate the holiday. Um, they just find it to be like this, they like very fake and, uh, and, um, just like an excuse to make you spend money. So I, maybe I've absorbed that cynicism over the years. Yeah, I don't care about Christmas. Fuck the holidays. Fuck it all. Fuck buying things. Fuck money. Do what you're passionate about. No one needs to get paid. Except for me. Give me more money. I, uh... I need, I need to afford my eating habits. <laughs>